I welcome you to the online streaming for Olive Branch Baptist Church. The opening scripture today is found in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2. Fixing our eyes upon Jesus, the pioneer and the perfecter of faith. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning the shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. You know, I open with this scripture today because we're going to be singing at the cross for the opening hymn. But also as we gather together, we want to remember that the sacrifice that Jesus made for the redemptions of our sins and so that we could have eternal life is what we hope you grow to know more, that what we hope to grow to know more, and that when we read scriptures like this, it really sets our hearts in a position to hear what ha God has to say to us today. So now comes a time where we look at our announcements and prayer concerns. The announcements for today is we are starting an adult small group. If you have any interest in this, feel free to message us on our Facebook page or there are sign up sheets in the back of the church. This small group will be led by Mike and Marla Edwards. Also Wednesdays, we have Bible study at 630 led by Tom Rogers and they're going through Ecclesiastes. So please join for that. Also, we are looking for volunteers for the nursery. If you would like to serve in this ministry, please reach out to Amanda Crawl. There is a women's Bible study starting. It's a 10 week study called Strength in the Struggle. And this is led by Aaron Eve. So if you have any questions about this, please reach out to us. Um, but once again, it's a 10 week study led by Aaron Eves. Also next Sunday, so February 5th, we're gonna be going snow tubing at Perfect North. This is a church wide event. It's on Sunday afternoon, once again, the 5th from five to seven. If you are not interested in snow tubing, you can still come, have a good time, sit around the fire and just have some good conversations. If you are interested in tubing, it's a $25 fee. There is a waiver form that is in the back of the church. We do need to collect the money beforehand. So if you're interested in going, please reach out to us so we can let Perfect North Slopes know. So once again, that's this coming Sunday, February 5th from five to seven. It's gonna be a lot of fun. We hope to see you there. Um, you know, it's fun to get community outside of these church walls. So we look forward to seeing you. Also, I am personally excited for this. On February 19th, we are going to be having a prayer walk. And this is led by the high school girls small group since Big Stuff. Um, so they've been meeting for the last, goodness, seven to eight months. And they are going to lead this prayer walk. Um, if you're like, oh no, I don't walk very well, that's okay. The distance is just from big church to little church. If weather's bad, we will stay in little, big church, excuse me. So I am super excited for this. It's gonna be a great time and the high school students are excited too. So we hope that you'll come out. Once again, that's February 19th. We're having a prayer walk here at Olive Branch. Now comes a time where we look at our prayer list. We've been praying for Jerry McKinley. He's been having the knee surgeries done. Um, I know he had one done. I don't know if he had the other one done, but we'll continue to pray for him. Also, Mark Einhouse had a triple bypass. Jimmy Meyer is in the Army, and his unit has been deployed. Donnie Covington is home, but we want to continue to pray for him. Randy Thomas had both knees replaced, um, and so we continue to pray for Randy. Bill Kennison is Kale's cousin. He is in the hospital. Um, he had a routine surgery and then ended up on dialysis. And so we want to continue to pray for him um, and that God's hand of healing be upon him. We also pray for Marie Davis and her health concerns. Toy Smith had some parathyroid issues with an anticipated surgery coming. So we continue to pray for Toy and we miss seeing you here, Toy. We pray for Betty Lucas and her health concerns. We pray that Livia Kreppen will continue to get stronger and return to walking. We pray for Christine Postal and her health concerns. We pray for her stress and anxiety during this time. And we pray that doctors can come to a conclusion on what's causing her issues, but we also pray for healing. We continue to pray for Andy Haskell that he would continue to get stronger. We pray for Natalie Dickerson and Deb Lister as they both have cancer, along with Sam Copeland, who will be having surgery, which is what we have prayed for. So praise God for that. But his surgery will be February 6th at um, IU Health, and they're going to take out the left side of the liver and three inches of the colon. Um, and his surgery will be at noon that day. So we want to specifically pray for that. You know, someone this week told me that God hears the specifics in our prayers. And the more specific we can be, the better. We also know that in some of these cases, we don't know specifics and God knows those too. Um, but Sam, if you're watching this, we've been praying for you. And we also praise God that things are improving. We continue to pray for Gene Crabtree as he has his chemo sessions. 
We continue to pray for Vicki Allen as she had surgery to remove some lung cancer and continues to undergo treatments for the management of that, along with Bud Van and his stage four lung cancer, Paula, Paula Turner as she um, fights leukemia. And we continue to pray for Dan Mangold. We also give God praise in the fact that he did get his kidney transplant this week. Um, the last I heard, things were going well. So we praise God for that. But we also ask that he continues to be with Dan as he heals from the surgery. We want to pray for Riley Easy. Also, Mr. Dean Moorhead from the school. He is a teacher there. Um, they were thinking possible lung cancer. I have not heard an update on that, but we want to continue to pray for him. Along with Kenny Thomas as he had a fall. And we continue to pray for Randy Dickerson as he has general health concerns. Jim Kincaid, as he learns to live with Parkinson's disease, we pray that his symptoms would be normalized, that the medications would help. We continue to pray for Natalie Clayton as she's been sick for a long time. Um, we just ask that God's healing hand be upon her. And last but not least, I want to take a moment to pray for Pat as he leads this congregation, as he leads our church family, um, that God would continue to pursue him and that the Holy Spirit would fill him and give him the words to say to know God better and so that he can also speak God better to our congregation. I also take a moment to pray for the unspoken prayer requests, the things that lay heavy on our heart that hurts too bad to speak out loud, or maybe we're not allowed to say them. Whatever it is, the things that lay heavy, we know that God knows them. Um, in that he hears the cries of our hearts. So why don't you pray with me today? God, what a morning just to come before you and say that we are thankful that you love us, that you choose us, and that you're present with us today. I know our prayer list is a little bit lengthy, and honestly, I know that you hear each name on them. We rejoice that people are lifting these, these names, these loved ones up in prayer. Lord, we know that you are a healer. We know that you want us to pray to you because you are a big God that can do the craziest things. Anything you want to do with is, is within your power. Lord, we do take a moment to praise you for the people who have gotten better. For Sam, that his tumor has shrunk so he can have surgery. For Dan, that he got a kidney transplant. We just thank you for moments like that. I know sometimes this prayer list is heavy and these are our loved ones. And we also praise you in the fact that you give us joy in that time. Lord, we love you. We ask that your presence be in this place today and through this broadcast. And we just thank you that in all things you are good. We love you and we praise you forever and ever. Amen.
David, would you please pray for us? We are uh, going to start this morning with a pretty simple question. And that is, do you believe that God is good? Do you believe that God is good? We say it a lot, right? God is good all the time and all the time. But do we always feel that? Um, I uh, got a picture from my oldest daughter. She and her family go to Seven Hills over at Florence. And she sent me a picture a minute ago. Literally thousands of people in their church are all standing up praying together for the Bengals today. <laughs> so um, if the Chiefs would happen to win, does that mean God's not good? You know, uh, um, do we always feel that, that God is good, even, in, even when we don't feel like he is being very good, either to us or to people around us? You know, we, we had great news Friday, and Courtney shared it with you today, about Dan getting his kidney transplant. Um, Lucinda called me Friday and said they were on their way. They had to be at the hospital at 2, and he was scheduled to have surgery at 10 o'clock Friday night, which he did, and everything went great. And we see that as a blessing, right? We see that as a, a, a really good day for Dan Mangle. But in that, there is a knowledge that for some family, it was a really bad day, right? Because if it's a planned transplant, they don't call you that morning and go, you need to be here and we're doing it today. You know, the, his good luck, his good fortune also comes with another family who had a very bad misfortune that day. So we can all look at basically the same situation and we can see God from two different directions, right? And God is good. And all the time. Right? You know, at Bible study a few Wednesdays ago, um, in our discussion, Greg gave an example that we are confronted with, with probably more than anything else when it comes to sharing our faith with other people. And that is a simple question, why do bad things happen to good people? Right? You've heard it. Why do bad things happen to good people? Because after all, God is good. And all the time, get used to that. You're going to get that a few times today. But our scripture this morning is a short one, but it's packed with a powerful message. So if you have your Bibles, we are, it's found in Psalms 100. Um, if you have your Bible and you kind of flip it almost in half, you're going to come to Psalms. Um, and, uh, or you're going to be near Psalms if you don't hit it exactly. But it's found in, one, in Psalm 100. And um, if you don't have your Bibles, it's going to be up on the screen. But uh, Psalm 100, verse 5 says this. Psalm 100, verse 5. For the Lord is good, and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. The Lord is good, and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. Join me in prayer this morning. Heavenly Father, uh, I just again thank you for this day. I thank you for all who are here, and I ask a blessing upon those members of our church family who, who were not able to be with us here today. Father, uh, we just lift up all the folks that we talked about uh, in our, on our prayer list and, and those that are in our hearts that we choose not to share, Father. We, we rest in the assurance that you already know those as well. And Father, as we spend a little time today looking at, at your word, I just ask that you would open not only our minds, but you would also open our hearts, that through it all, Father, you would be glorified and we would draw closer to you. Father, we love you. We're honored by your presence in this room with us right now. And we ask these things in your son's name. Amen. Now, I don't know if you memorize scripture, if you're one of those people who memorizes scripture. But if you do, the scripture we just read and we're going to talk about today is a good one that I think we should all commit to memory. Because the Lord is good. His love does last forever. 
and he is faithful. And that faithfulness will continue through all generations to come, not just through us. For the Lord is good, and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. Because God is good. You guys are lagging today. <laughs> and all the time, there you go. Do you believe that? Do you believe it with all your heart? Because there are times in everyone's life where that may be a little hard to believe. And it may be even harder to hold on to. I mean, it's easy to believe that God is good when things are good, right? When the bills are paid and the family is healthy and happy and there's food in the cupboard and in the freezer and the job is going well, God is good. But is God good when you're afraid that the electricity might get shut off? When the kids are sick or someone you love is entering hospice? When you're hoping that the food pantry is open because there's nothing in the cabinets and the kids are going to be home from school soon. When the boss is on your back and that raise you hoped for didn't happen. And you're afraid that you might get laid off or even fired. If that happens, then what are you going to do? Is God good then? Because God is good. And all the time. But in the midst of all of those human things, it's only human for us to think about those things, right? There was, there was a Sunday several years ago. And we were over in the chapel, the little church. And I was doing a message about how God loves us. God loves you. Even if you don't believe it, you need to know with all your heart that God loves you. And I'm just pounding away on that. And as I spoke, I looked in the back of the room, and Dory Peelman is sitting back there. And her head is covered by a silk scarf because chemo had caused her to lose all her hair. And she was sitting there with two little boys, one on each side of her. And all I could think about was what I imagined was running through her mind as I said that. God loves you. And I'm thinking, she's back there going, are you sure? Are you sure God loves me? I mean, that's easy for you to say because you're not busy throwing up and feeling horrible because they're pumping poison through your body right now. God loves you. Sure doesn't seem like it. In that moment all these years later, along with another one, it impacts me to this day. Emily, Dory's daughter, I tell her, I said, there are pictures of two women in my bedroom, my wife and her mom, Dory's, Dor uh, Emily's mom, Dory. I have a picture of her that Greg gave me that, that sits on my dresser. I see it every day, and I think about her. <coughs> Hear me this morning. You have to believe in God's goodness. You have to believe in God's promises in good times and especially in bad times. Because it's at those times when we need to focus on God's goodness. It may be hard on a human level to see God in the darkness of the storms happening in your life, but He is there. And over the past few weeks, we, we've been talking about how to... Sh not only share your faith, but show your faith, right? How we, how we share and we show our faith to other members of our church family. 
and how we disciple other people outside of our church family into the same faith journey that we are blessed to be on. And we've been talking about the, the resistance that we get in some cases, right? We spoke two weeks ago about how we meet obstacles that others may throw at us as they resist the gospel. And in all of that, I think it's so important that as, as we think about how we begin those conversations with people who may resist what we believe, that we come at it from a central focus, and that focus is that God is good, and all the time, Because that's core to your faith. Because when people don't believe, or when people don't believe, people who don't believe, when they begin to think about a relationship with God, they don't allow their, they don't allow their minds to wander back to the good things God has provided, right? Because when we say God loves you, he always has, he does, and he always will. Do you think people think about those good things and think you are absolutely right? God is good, and he always has been. Tell me more. I mean, I truly wish that was the response all the time. And sometimes that is the reaction. But most of the time, their minds race back to bad things that have happened. And then they expect you to justify their objections. And they will ask, directly or indirectly, why does God allow bad things to happen to good people? And I have an answer for that, and it's rather blunt, and probably doesn't do much to start a conversation. But I usually say when somebody says, why do bad things happen to good people? My response is usually, what makes you think you're good people? I mean, that's a fun answer, right? That'll start a conversation. <laughs> Fill up the baptistry, Richard. <laughs> but when we think about it, my definition of good people begins with the assumption that I am one. Right? You do too. I'm good people, so those people around me, they must be good people too. And why do bad things happen to good people? But the Bible says in Romans chapter 3, verse 23, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And that all word, that can hurt sometimes, can it? But here's your in when that happens. All includes them, but all also includes you, right? You were, and here's a moment, still are a sinner. And it is only through placing our faith in God through His Son, Jesus Christ, that you can have any chance of an eternity in heaven. We talked about this in Bible study Wednesday. There aren't a bunch of side doors that get you into heaven. There's one. Jesus in John chapter 14 said, I am the way and the truth and the life, and no one comes to the Father. No one. No one comes to the Father except through me. So we place our faith in our eternities in the promise that God is good, that His love for me is eternal. Nothing can take it away. Even my own fears and my own failures that occupy my mind. And God is faithful to me as I am also faithful to Him. And that covenant of faith not only applies to me, but to all people who will someday come after me. The 
that's still hard, right? When those feelings are bad. When you're feeling bad. When things aren't going just right. It's hard on a human level to pull that out. But I think in those times, it's all a matter of perspective. And sometimes I think we have it backwards. Because the right perspective to take in our daily lives, the highs and lows is this. See, the problems that we struggle with is that so many times we see God through the lens of our problems. I have this problem, and based on how I'm dealing with this problem, then I have, then I have a perception of how I see God in my problem, right? I mean, be honest, you go through struggles and hard times when you either don't think God will help you, or you don't think God can help you. But you're making that decision. You're deciding that he's away, that he is absent, or that he is there and he doesn't care. We look at whatever issue we have and we decide whether or not we think God will or can help. In essence, we make determinations about God based on how big or how worrisome our problems are. So we begin to take our problem and we begin to see God through that lens. But instead, we need to see our problems through the lens of God. We need to see our problems as temporary. We also need to consider our problems through our firm belief that God is good and that he loves us and because, his lo because of his love for us, he will always remain faithful to the promises that he has made to us. See, when we encounter problems, our t human tendency is to pick up that lens and look at God. And what God says is, when you encounter problems, pick up my lens and look at them through me. Because it is easy to say God is good when things are good. But do we believe that God is good even when we hit hard times? See, as Christians and as members of God's family, we should cling to God's promises even when we don't see the answers. And if you're one of those people who has held back from a relationship with God because there have been bad things that have happened to you or to someone you care about or you, and you just can't let go of that, I understand that. Because all of us share a common story. Something has happened to you that wasn't fair. It wasn't fair. And how you react to that is whether or not you're looking at that through that lens and seeing God, or if in the midst of that you're picking up the lens of God and seeing your eternity. Because we just need to consider for a moment our lives from an eternal perspective. I spoke earlier about Dory in the back of the church that day. And I told you that there were two stories, and this is the second one. Some of you have heard me share this in the past. But we weren't in church in this story. We were in a hospital room in a hospice ward at Dearborn County Hospital. And she knew, and I knew, that the end was coming. And there are parts of this job that are glorious, and there are parts of this job that are hard, and that's a big, hard one. 
she looked at me in that hospital bed and she said, Pat, I believe that God gave me cancer in order to save me and my family. That's a great statement, right? Grab my attention. And she continued to say that she and her family had a great life and were loving life and had all kinds of things going on. And they were so busy and had so much to do that she either didn't consider God and church and faith or she had decided in her mind that she didn't have time for that. And she said that it was her cancer diagnosis that led her to church, to this church. And it was the discussions that we began to have from there that led her to make a decision that she needed to give her heart to the Lord and be baptized. And she was. And her faithfulness from there led her husband and her sons to also find faith and be baptized. Her daughter Emily already was. And her faithfulness to a degree led us to have Renzi and Thelma and Casey and Alyssa and Ellie and Maddie and Shawnee. Because primarily or secondarily, they came to find us through her journey. But here Dory sat a short time from passing into her eternity. And she was facing that eternity with an unshakable faith that God loved her and gave his son for her and that soon she would be in his presence for her eternity. Because Dory Peelman believed that God was good and he believed that God loved her and she believed that God would be faithful to the promises that he had made to her here in this life. Because she believed that God was good and that all the time. And she did all of that in the midst of a situation where nearly everyone else would look in from the outside and say, where is God in that? Why would God do such a bad thing to a good person? She wasn't looking her at her diagnosis from the lens. She wasn't looking at God through the lens of her diagnosis. She was looking at her diagnosis through the lens of God. And her faithfulness will continue to grow and grow and grow, and she's not alone. Carson's faithfulness will continue to grow and flourish through generations. And we look at those situations and we go, that was awful. And God looks at those situations and he goes, I am being glorified in the life that they lived. And for that, they are blessing me and I am blessing them, right? So all of this might be you this morning. Maybe you've built up a wall of doubt that's easy to keep up because you look around and you see a whole lot of people who have built the same walls. And if that's you, you need to understand that God is good and that God more than anything else wants what's best for you eternally. He wants those things because he loves you. He always has, he does, and he always will be faithful to you. So consider this morning that perhaps you need to start taking down that wall. Because when you do, you'll begin to see the sun, pun intended. Because in the midst of our lives, if you don't ever remember anything about this message today, remember this. God is good. And all the time. Join me in prayer this morning. Heavenly Father, I just... Uh, Thank you for this day, and, and Father, I, I thank you for the, 
for the lives that have passed through us and among us that, that brought you such great glory. Father, there, there are people all around us who have hurt. Something's happened they don't think's fair. Something happened that they don't think's right. Something happened that they see as a bad thing that happened to a good person. And not only do they look to you for answers, they look to us to give them the answers for you. Father, there are things we can't explain away. But when we look at eternity through your eyes, the things that happen here on earth, good and bad, are just blips on a radar screen to God. Because he's leading us all home. This is just a stop. This is not our home. Father, it's my prayer today that if there's somebody out there in this room who came in here saying, I, I don't know about God because these things happened when I was a kid or these things happened to my parents or these things happened to friends of mine. Help them to see, Father, that you never told us a life with you would be easy. You just promised us that a life with you would be worth it. Father, I ask that you move in hearts today. Maybe there's somebody who needs to give their life to you for the very first time. Maybe they, they carry some kind of a burden that they just need to let go of. Speak to their hearts today, Father, and let them know that you're ready to take that burden from them. Maybe there's somebody who <clears throat> needs to rededicate themselves to you. Maybe there are people in this church who need to officially become a part of this church family. Maybe there are people today, Father, who just need to pray. They carry a burden and they just, they just need to share it and ease it. Father, whatever it is today, I just ask that as we sing our hymn of invitation this morning that you would speak to hearts and that we would answer those calls. Father, we love you. And we ask these things in the name of your Son and of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. And ask members of our prayer team to stand up and move around the room. Um, if uh, there's something on your heart today that you need to uh, let go of, they're around the room. They're ready to pray with you and pray for you. I'll be down here. But whatever, the, whatever God is calling on you today, be brave enough to answer that call. Let's all stand as we sing our hymn of invitation. Jesus died my 
my soul to say, my lips shall still repeat, Jesus paid it all, all to him I owe, sin had left a crimson stain. Amen, amen. Thank you all for being here today. Uh, don't forget, uh, we need a we need a number for snow tubing. That that list sign up list is on the back uh, on that back table back there. The small group list is back there. Um, so uh, we just like I said, we need to give Perfect North a, a general idea of how many people are going to come. So. Um, if you can get your names on there and how many people you're going to bring, that would be great. Um, that would help us out a lot. Um, all kinds of things going on. Um, just be in prayer over uh, as we head toward the prayer walk that, that uh, our young, um, our small group uh, of teenage girls has been, has been working on uh, on the 19th uh, and all the different things that are going on. Um, and uh, just as always, God continues to bless uh, this body of believers uh, the the building is the people not the not or the the church is the people not the building and we should never lose sight of that i'm going to ask shane to uh, close us in a word of prayer and uh, after he does uh, we'll sing our doxology and then uh, give some hugs and some handshakes and let people know that you're glad that they're here who day amen let's sing our doxology praise god for Have a blessed week.